thank God. What's up, Facebook Live? As you know, I gotta have some sort of massive disaster. The Facebooky Live. The Facebooky Live is failing me. All right, let's get this shared everywhere it needs to be shared. We're running late. <clears throat> per the usual. It's just fashionable late, brother. You're good. Always. Static, and why wouldn't there be? Great spot. Just throw some and bring it. I am. Problem solved. That is beautiful. No static. None of the static. MVP status. There we go. All right, let's get this. Sh I don't know what we just did right there, but it's killing my soul. All right, guys, we're running a little bit behind. We'll get the recording started here soon. Thanks for tuning in. We got Coach Ryan Aiello waiting uh, very patiently. Thank God he's not on hold because we were running on time, and then we weren't. So a couple minutes here. He's not going to have his pants on here soon. Yeah. A little World <laughs> Cup action. That was a sweet header. All right. I think I did it before. I need to have it again quickly. <laughs> Three seconds of silence. What's up, everybody? Welcome into the East of the Bend podcast. We are the official podcast of the Notre Dame Fan Club of Columbus. I'm your host, Greg Schaefer, with, as always, my co-host, Will Havanis. What up, Will? What up? This is a very, very special episode. We're so pumped to bring these coaches' spotlight episodes to you. Um, North Catholic head coach Ryan Aiello is going to be on the line here with us. Um, we also have in studio, for the very first time, our new teammate, if you will, Aaron Shook. How's it going, Aaron? What's up, guys? Glad to be here. Uh, Aaron is a North Catholic grad, 07, played for the 2007 state title team. Um, so, you know, very cool to have him in here. Also a phenomenal wrestler. After we get done talking to Coach Aiello, we'll definitely uh, get, get talk to Aaron a little bit and uh, get his perspective. You know, it's kind of a unique perspective to be able to have an alum on, uh, state title winning alum, talking to the new head coach. So, but wait, there's more. Uh, for the first time ever, we can officially say we are sponsored by Dempsey's Food and Spirits, Game Watch Parties, 346 South High Street, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, every Game Watch Party, we got some things going on this weekend for uh, 4th of July. And who doesn't love a good mimosa or Bloody Mary or anything like that? So even if it's not football season, head on down to uh, Dempsey's, get yourself something to eat. Uh, we are also in associate, association with the Dos Leprechauns Podcast Network, Jason and Nate Hendricks. Everything that is Notre Dame football and Notre Dame athletics, they take care of all that. Um, you know, we're Notre Dame foundation of a show, but we do a little bit of everything. And then, of course, DJ Digital Input, Kent Price, uh, 80s, 90s dance music. He, uh, whatever needs you have to get your party livened up, he is your guy, 740-973-0817. Uh, and today is a very special day because it's actually Kent's 50th birthday. So happy birthday, Mr. Price. So um, we'll get uh, Coach Aiello called back. Thank God he didn't stay on the line. Um, but the last time we did this, uh, we had uh, Coach Chad Riley from Notre Dame. We had him stay on the line. It was like three minutes. This would have been like 15. So um, before we call Coach back, uh, remember you can catch all previous episodes and this one on iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever you get, you get your podcasts at. Check them out. Um, also follow us east of the bend on facebook um, that's where we're currently streaming live what up facebook and uh, twitter at east of the bend so coach ilo i said five or six minutes and he's been waiting for like 15 now so let's get him called back because i know that's what you're all are waiting for you just don't want to stare at our ugly mugs 
You might hear some static too. Well, just get over it because <laughs> live with it. So let's get Coach called back here. Coach is actually from the South Bend area for Notre Dame fans out there. Hello. Hey, Coach Aiello, Greg Schaefer calling you back. Sorry, it took a little bit of time. We're no, live no on problem, live on yes. Facebook now. So uh, yeah, awesome. I t- I told you uh, we're if anybody knew how haphazard this uh, podcast was, they'd probably never yeah. come on it. To be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, so hey, I'm looking forward. To we it. had a uh, we went to connect to go live, and then all of a sudden it was like, guess what? We have no Wi-Fi connection, and all these expensive things that Steve Jobs apparently came up with with the iPhone <laughs> and and uh, just just, you, just right? decided, guess what? We're not working today. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, man, we're really excited to have you on. Um, talked a little bit before the show. Um, you know, kind of, you know, rehash it a little bit. Tell Wave fans a little bit about yourself um, and some things they may not know about you, and uh, we'll get this thing kicking. Awesome. Yeah, sounds sounds good. Well, thank you again for uh, for having me on. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, yeah. I grew up in, in the South Bend area, uh, Granger specifically. Went to high school, Penn High School, which is actually a, a very big high school in that area. I mean, I graduated with around, you know, 850, 900 kids, uh, but reminded me a lot of Newark Catholic, you know, as I went through that process. Um, graduated from Ball State University, got my undergrad master's there. Um, as a GA, when I was getting my master's, you know, that's really what got me into football. Um, ended up getting a defensive coordinator position at uh, Anderson University, St. Joseph's College. Uh, got out, uh, got into the business world, which which got me into the Columbus, Ohio area. Uh, when I got here, though, ended up hooking up uh, with Brian Cross, head coach at Bishop Reedy, uh, Hall of Fame coach, in my opinion, just just a tremendous mentor. Um, got back into the high school game of football, but still worked in some of the business world. But uh, decided that just wasn't the right wasn't the right direction for me. Uh, so with the support uh, from my wife and, and stepdaughter, ended up going back to school, getting into teaching, and, and ultimately landed at uh, Newark Catholic. Very nice. And did you uh, play any other sports growing up other than football? You know, I, I wrestled uh, for, for quite a while, and rugby was, was uh, pretty big up at Penn High School. We had a pretty good rugby team as well, and ended up going to nationals there. So football, wrestling, and rugby were, were my three main sports. Nice. You have actually have three grapplers on the show. Uh, Aaron wrestled at North Catholic. And oh, then yeah. me oh. and me and Will, uh, we we both uh, do jujitsu. Um, I train at the Helson Gracie Academy here up here in Westerville. <laughs> That's neat. Yeah, and uh, Will's at the High Combat Sports Academy with uh, Dustin Ware. It's a Sauce Team affiliation. So. <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, that's, that's incredible. Yeah, wrestling's a, a big part of my family. I, I wasn't as good uh, in comparison to my two cousins uh, that wrestled, uh, you know, in the Columbus, Ohio area. But just a great sport. You, you know, there, there's something, something special about wrestling, you know, just kind of that, that, that internal drive. Uh, that, that you have to have it's it's a great experience it's definitely a different mentality i know uh, me and will talk about it all the time because we didn't wrestle my school actually didn't have it my high school mm-hmm. didn't and okay. um you know i got into it i started fighting mma and some things like that but um it, it's like uh it's different than a team sport that's for sure to this day i feel like i'm a little behind the wrestlers you know i've been training for almost 10 years and in, in, you know you get a solid high school wrestler in there they're already it seems like ahead of the game you know definitely yeah. yeah, there's something about the leverage. You know, I tell you, it's something that, that I'm going to encourage our kids that aren't involved with the sports in the winter, you know, doing basketball or anything like that, get involved with wrestling. You know, again, just that, that mentality that you have to have, the, the leverage um, in itself, you know, just the understanding, uh, you know, kind of that push-pull mentality there, hands, feet, oh, it's, it's great. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So you went to one of the bigger schools up there, um, right, in South Bend, in Penn, pretty, it's a pretty large school, correct? It, it is, you know, and, and I, I think that was the, the funny thing when I went to and, and came to Columbus and started understanding Ohio uh, sports and, and high schools overall, you know, the high schools in Indiana, uh, we obviously the population isn't as big. There's not as many high schools, but the overall population is much, much bigger uh, within some of the schools in comparison to Ohio. So although there's more schools, although there's a higher population, again, I graduated with class of 850 900 kids you, you don't see that in the state of ohio so that was that was different um you know everybody makes it uh the playoffs in indiana you know and, and especially at the higher divisions you actually get a first round by there from my understanding the way it is right now they've actually moved up in classes since i left indiana you know again i think that it's something special here in ohio where 
you know, you've got to qualify to get in, you know, it makes that regular season that much more meaningful, but the difference in population really threw me off, you know, just kind of the numbers game and, and how that plays a part in, in roster sizes and stuff. It, it's been a great experience. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Now uh, you were pretty part of a pretty special team uh, with ball state and playing under Brady Hoke. Um, um, you know, that 2008 team um, was very special. You guys had a chance at a BCS game and I mean, the last two games kind of, you know, things didn't go your guys' way, but can you talk about that season a little bit? And that's, I mean, for Ball State, you know, the, really before that even, you know, the, the University of David Letterman. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's pretty much all they had going on other than, uh, you know, other than David Letterman, that's kind of about it. Can you talk about how special that season was and being a part of that? Yes, it was It was very special. Um, you know, just having the opportunity to play for Coach Hoke, uh, coach for Coach Hoke as a graduate assistant was just a, a great experience. He's a huge mentor. Um, I, and I tell you, and I don't mean to get off the question too much, but it, it was just a great experience to learn from him. You know, he's very much a, a player's coach. Um, and what I mean by that is he's always going to do the right thing for the players, which I think is very important, you know, especially in the role that coaches have on, on these young men, you know, whether it be high school or, or collegiately, um, you know, really understood the, the importance of, of mental and physical toughness, you know, and really how the skills learned through football really are transferable to the real world, you know, and, and I think the, the process that you have to go through to achieve success, you know, what goes into it. It's not just, you know, Saturdays, you know, for, from a collegiate standpoint, Fridays from, from a high school standpoint, you know, it's, it's those workouts in the off season, the winter, the preparation, the film breakdown, all that stuff. It's the process that really determines success. Um, you know, and I think what I learned most importantly, and I think what was a huge result of our success that particular year was, was Coach Oak's ability to establish relationships, you know, how he connected with the players, how he was able to motivate them, um, you know, each and every year leading up to that. And I was very fortunate when I came to Ball State because we consistently improved each and every year that I was there. And, and that was a result of, of recruiting and creating those relationships and, and improving and evaluating the process. Um, so it was pretty neat to see that end result, you know, a lot of the players uh, that were seniors that particular year and, and juniors for that matter, you know, they started as freshmen and sophomores. So to, to see them evolve, grow, develop, um, it was just an incredible experience. It was a very emotional year. You know, we, we ended up having a, a fairly traumatic injury to uh, one of our players, Dante Love, who, who was a great athlete for us, played a, a slot wide receiver. So it was a very emotional year. Um, as we went through that process, but just a great experience to see it from what it was to what it became. Mm -hmm. And you had a, you had a nice player on your side of the ball, uh, Bryant Haynes. Um, very yes, nice. Was. Yeah. Very yeah. nice player. And then a very special player who, you know, you know, anyway, if he goes anywhere else, maybe he's even a, a high draft pick as, as Nate Davis as, as a quarterback, oh, just yeah. a, a very nice yeah. athlete for sure. Uh, just a, just an incredible arm, uh, a great young man and Bryant Haynes as well. Uh, you know, I, I I knew him pretty well. I haven't been in touch with him lately, but uh, yeah, they're both great players. Yeah. Ohio kids as well. Um, is there anything that you learned from that season that you can bring with you into North Catholic? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of the things that, that I was discussing with Coach Hope brought, you know, just that the importance of that mental, physical toughness and, and really getting, um, you know, these newer Catholic young men. And there's a, a great culture already established there, but just building off that and getting them to understand how a lot of these skills are transferable for them, you know, as they as they graduate newer Catholic, you know, as they, as they go on to college and, and have their own families and, and start their own, you know, work and, and employment opportunities, you know, a lot of these skills that, that we're teaching them right now can directly relate. And that's, that's a big part of, of what I want to uh, provide them, you know, and again, just the relationships, you know, I, I want to create a connection with, with each and every one of these guys, you know, and, and really find out the, the best way to motivate them to get the most from them in this experience. You know, it's football is a very special sport um, because just due to the, the enrollment, you know, the roster size, it's unlike anything, uh, any high school or, or collegiate sport, so everybody's got to have that unique role in, in, in creating those relationships with those these young men and, and finding out how to best get them to perform that role, whether it be on scout team, you know, whether it be the starting quarterback or starting linebacker, you know, how do we get the most from each and every one of them? And, and yet, you know, create a, that family atmosphere and that team bond. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So uh, keeping all that in mind, uh, was it an easy choice when the North Catholic job came available to apply for it and move forward with all that and, uh, 
you know, can you elaborate on that for us for a little bit? Yeah, yeah, and it uh, it definitely was, you know, and, and it was it was pretty neat um, having you know been at Bishop Reedy, you know, we had scrimmaged them those past two years, and, you know, and ironically enough, my first year that I started with Bishop Reedy, um, I had the opportunity to meet Coach Graham. Coach Graham actually graduated from St. Joseph's College, where I was the defensive coordinator at. So, you know, my first scrimmage, first year being in Ohio, you know, having to have those conversations with him was, was pretty special. You know, really got to understand Newark Catholic right then and there, that first scrimmage. Um, so we went back to pack scrimmages and actually uh, went into a uh, our second round of playoffs. We ended up losing to Newark Catholic two years ago to them. So I was very versed in who Newark Catholic was, what they were about, uh, the traditions, the, the culture that was there. So, um, you know, the fact that I had the opportunity to place my name into this and, and you know, getting the background knowledge from Coach Cross as well, um, it, this was a no-brainer. You know, and as I mentioned, the, the high school that I come from, very high expectations, you know. It, it's it's to win. It's to win state championships. Right. Um and that's what that's what exists at Newark Catholic. You know, the expectation is to win and not just not just from an athletic standpoint, from an academic standpoint as well. So this, this was a no no brainer for me. Yeah, um, that, you know, that kind of goes without saying. But you guys, this is what I called Coach Riley when we had him on the Notre Dame soccer coaches. I was, yeah. I thought what I like to ask these when these coaches come on is like, what kind of pressure do you feel coming in? But I've met so many of you guys and talked to them it, it, over the years of playing doing this show, still being an athlete, you guys just embrace that pressure, don't you? And you come yeah, into situations yeah, you're, like you're, this. You're, you're exactly right. Um, you know, is there pressure? Yes. But but I think when, when you channel that pressure, uh, I, I think it's a very good thing. I, I think it's a healthy thing, to be honest with you. It prevents complacency. You know, it, it just motivates you to – uh, to grow, to get better. And, and, and that's, that's what I like. I, I, I like that pressure. Um, I, I think it's a good thing for, for myself, for my coaching staff, for these players. It, it just keeps you on your toes. Um, you know, I, I have the, you know, a lot of people that I've spoken to, I, I just have extremely high expectations for my, myself, my coaching staff, my players alike, um, that these expectations exceed anything that anybody else within the newer Catholic community could be even, even be placed on me, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, I, it's going to be a lot of fun moving mm-hmm. forward. Tell me about, uh, your first day there. What was the atmosphere like the first day, you know, uh, coming into Newark Catholic when you walked in and you are the guy now, you know, <laughs> you know I'll tell you, it was, it was a whirlwind. They actually, actually, you know, I got called, uh, I was actually doing my student teaching to be honest with you, uh, when I was offered the position. Um, so I got a call from our athletic director, Scott Harris, you know, offered the job, you know, want to talk to my wife, Kaylee, and, and make sure we're good from that standpoint. And, you know, once I accepted the position, he goes, Hey, I, I've got a, got a whole setup for you. So, um, wanted me up there that evening, be introduced to the uh, last home game for the men's basketball team. So just really got thrown in the mix, you know, meeting everybody, uh, the people, part of the NCAA and, and, and different administrative staff, teachers, players, all that stuff. Uh, so it's just an incredible welcoming experience. You, you know, I, I couldn't have asked for more um, in that transition. Uh, it, just everybody was so welcoming. They, they were so supportive and everything that was going on. And, and you know, in, in step, step into the, the ranks of, of uh, you know, Coach Bill Franks, I, I think that the most of Coach Bill Franks and, and what he's done for Newark Catholic. Uh, so, so it was a very special moment for me to, to take that opportunity and, and replace such a tremendous coach like Bill Franks. Yeah, definitely. You you got the uh, Brian Kelly, Urban Meyer, Jim Trestle treatment. That's for sure. That's pretty awesome. I seen the pictures <laughs> and stuff. You you come it out was. and uh, that, that's got to be that's got to be fun at least at, at minimum to be able to come out and uh, I think that's probably the best way to do it. Halftime basketball game, come out, mm-hmm. get your face out there, things like that. So yeah, uh, it was it was a great opportunity. Coach, you uh, you touched on a really good point when you were talking about you know meeting the NCAA members and uh, you know there's there's a lot of alumni still engaged within North Catholic. Um, you know, what's your plan on getting them engaged uh, now that you're here and, and moving forward with things? You know, I, I think a huge, a huge part of that is just being visible and accessible to them. Um, you know, N- newer Catholic is is a well-oiled machine, and, and how they fundraise and, and how they get out into the alumni, and I think it's just simple things as being there for those events uh, to, to speak to the alumni. You know, I think it's important to make sure that alumni. Um, you know, are always welcome in everything that we're doing, whether it be practices, obviously we encourage them to come to games and, and support us from that standpoint, but just be visible and, and listen to, you know, what they have to say in, in their experiences, especially 
uh, being an outsider. You know, let, let's be honest. You know, I didn't graduate from Newark Catholic. I, I haven't been a part of it. I, I know that it exists. You know, I know how many state championships we won, but I, I think to really listen to them, be a part of those events, listen to what they've gone through uh, to kind of just get more involved with, with the history and the tradition that they, I think that's probably the most important thing. You know, that way I can relay those experiences to my players. You know, none of the, the players that I have right now have, have won a state championship, have, have come close to winning the state championship. So it's important that I relay those stories and those experiences to these kids so that they understand and, and take even more pride in what they come from and what they represent. Mm-hmm. So coach, You've got you're you're coaching high school kids now. Um, yep. What are, what are your plans for developing your youth, and do you plan on trying to you know talk to any of the coaches that aren't coaching high school yet, but you know they're going to be feeding players through your system? Are you talking like my youth coaches? And yeah, stuff like yeah. That? Is that what you mean? Yep. Yeah. So we we've uh, yeah great great question. We we obviously the youth is is tremendously important to our success in the future. You, you know, playing that numbers and and you know, getting more kids to come out for football. Um, that, that's a huge part of it. So, you know, we, we've, we're going to continue to run a camp. I know Newark Catholic has always run a youth camp. Um, we're going to continue to do that. I think it's going to be a little bit different this year in how we organize it and how we run it. Uh, but July 23rd through July 26th from 11 to 1, we're going to have our youth camp. So that's going to be open to all 2B third graders through 2B eighth graders. So hoping to get some great numbers for all that stuff. Um, and, and we really want to stress – you know, at, at that camp and just fundamentals, techniques, have fun, get these kids competing a little bit. You know, we're going to do some seven on seven for some of those older kids, you know, in middle school, we're going to do some razzle dazzle ball, which is, uh, you know, it's similar to a seven on seven, get them competing a little bit, just have some fun, you know, but again, really stressing the fundamentals, techniques of the game, do some agility work, um, you know, go through some different uh, exercises there to, again, just engage uh, these kids. I think it's so important at, at that youth level to just have fun. You know, compete, have fun, get after a little bit, you know, enjoy your time with, with your friends and all that stuff. Um, and then in addition to that, we, we've really reached out to your point with, with the coaches. Uh, we're really trying to create a lot more continuity among all levels, right? So high school, seventh, eighth, fifth, sixth grade. So I've had a lot of meetings already in uh, coaching our coaches, our youth coaches, on the expectations that I have for them. Um, as we continue to grow and, and develop. And then most importantly, you know, schematically, what are we doing? You know, just formationally, what we're calling plays, um, some of the fundamental drills from an O-line, D-line standpoint, you know, running backs, DBs, just how do we create some continuity so that when we get these young men coming up, coming up you know, through the ranks, incoming freshmen, you know, they're aware of what we're calling things so that we can get to a deeper level of, of understanding schematically and, and what we want to do. So you've got, you kind of hinted on it there with like your summer camps and everything like that, what you guys mm -hmm. plan on doing, but with your own high schoolers, what, what do you guys plan on doing for the spring and summer preparation, getting ready for the season? Yeah. So since I took over, I mean, that, that was probably the first thing that, that we were putting together is our, our strength and conditioning program. Um, you know, that, that is the most important part. And we've got a lot of young men that are involved with other sports, which I think is a great thing. You know, I, I personally, I, I think it's great from a uh, mental, physical standpoint to, to kind of get away. I, I know some people don't view that the same, but I, I'm a proponent of, of multi-sport athletes. I, I think it just, for the exact reasons that I just said, from a mental, physical standpoint, I think it's good. I think it's good to be around different coaches with, with different philosophies, different mentalities. I think that will help them ultimately grow throughout their four years at Newark Catholic. Um, so I want them to get into ba baseball, basketball, wrestling, track, whatever it may be. I, I, it's good for them. Um, so having said that, the kids that we do have through throughout the spring, throughout the winter that, that we can work with, you know, take them through that weight program. You know, we've been going four days a week um, through by OHSAA it allows you to be on a, a one to seven ratio with these kids. So what we'll do is we'll get those small groups of kids, one coach to seven players, and, and we slowly start to implement some of our basic drills per position right you know o-line d-line uh, db's linebackers we'll take them through those drills so that's the process that we've gone through uh gone through right now you know we we uh we have the senior led seven on seven stuff you know that's ran solely by the players there uh we try to do that a couple times per week right now uh we've upped you know going into the summer here our conditioning practices right we're running a little bit more uh getting getting our cardio to where it needs to be 
Mm-hmm. So, so to follow up on the strength and conditioning, um, mm-hmm. real quick. So coming from college where you're dealing with young men who are becoming adults, do you, do you think you'll differ your, your strength and conditioning dealing with, you know, teenage boys who, who might not be able to, to do the same things? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's a great point. I, I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of different people on that. And yes and no. You know, I, I think it's it's the amount of weight that you're putting them on. You know, I'm not a firm believer on one rep maxes, um, right? So I, I just, that's just my philosophy on it, you know, and, and some of the people that I've been surrounded with. So to have a, a young man, you know, a young high school kid do a one rep power clean max, I think that's where you're, increasing the susceptibility for these kids to get injured doing stuff like that hang cleans power cleans which again i'm a proponent of those are very difficult exercises i think to your point in teaching these kids but when when taught correctly right and when you're establishing other exercises to support the development of what it takes to do that lift i think now you're facilitating a healthy environment for them to understand the proper text techniques with some of those things so they can get it. So by the time, you know, they're juniors and seniors, you know, they're, they're doing that stuff with great technique. And, and now you're just facilitating a healthy environment environment for them to, to grow from a weightlifting perspective um, and not get injured. Yeah. I mean, I think it also lowers exactly lowers your uh, in, uh, risk of injury. I remember when I was in school, um, I remember Larry Allen played for the Cowboys uh, oh, yeah. He had yeah. that massive bench press, and they said his trainers, after he hit, like, I think it was a 600-pound bench, they're like, L- you are done. Literally, yeah, they're yeah. not letting him lift any more weight because at some point it's just not functional anymore. No, you know? I, I couldn't agree more. And what's uh, the uh, Alabama quarterback? Jeez, um, oh, I can't think of his name off the top of it. He was in a similar situation. Uh, you know, he, he was squatting a, a tremendous amount of weight. And was that Jalen Hurts? Stri- yeah, yeah. yeah they, they stopped him as well, and I, I think that's – that's right. You know, at some point you just gotta, you gotta risk what you're doing uh, from a functional standpoint and, and the balance of weight that you're putting on some of these kids, you know, enough's enough. But, you know, we do, we get a lot of freshmen, you know, some of these freshmen, they can't do a proper squat, oh, you oh. know, with not without <laughs> yeah. a bar. you know, oh. so it's some of those small things that we've got to teach these kids to do and, and how we break down some of our exercises to build in that hamstring strength, right? To, to build in that lower back strength. We, we've just got to approach it from that standpoint first. You know, we can't just start throwing on 225 pounds to a 2B freshman kid and have him squat. You know, right. that, that's going to get him hurt. So we, we've just got to break down some of the movements. But once you break those down, we can ultimately get to where we need to be. You know, I got to say thank you. Um, if you never do anything else but teach people proper form, um, right. thank you so much. Cause I, <laughs> yeah. I, I can't stand it when you see somebody doing a squat for so much weight and they're not oh, even doing it right. 100%. You know, when, when and, and, you know, I, I've had a lot of, and to our question about alumni, you know, there's been some great alumni that have a lot of experience that I've talked to. You know, believe me, I, I'll be the first one to admit I'm always learning, right? I, I don't have all the answers. You know, I, I know what I like to do. I have my philosophy on everything that we're doing, uh, but I want to learn. So we, we've had some great alumni that have come approach me about some of the strength and conditioning stuff that have been great resources, um, you know, moving forward to me, you know, and, and maybe how to break some things down a little bit better. So, uh, again, the alumni has been great already to this point, um, you know, in addition to what I want to do and, and help facilitating that. Yeah, I, I like that. You know, you're going to be so involved with it. I mean, I, uh, not the not to sit here and us date ourselves, but uh, it's kind of like when <laughs> yeah. we when we were in school, it was it was like, all right, here's your workout for the day and go <laughs> yeah. and yeah. good luck. Yeah. You know, yeah. some of us, you know, we, we we got it right away for better or for worse, and then yep. some other some others, you look in the corner at some you know 98 pound freshman, and you're like, oh, something bad's about to happen down there. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. well, and we that you know we break you exactly right. Well, that's why we break it down. A lot of the we typically will break it down, you know, upper classmen, lower classmen, so that we can teach them in a different way, yet not slow down the entire lift for the upper classmen, right? Yeah. So we'll break it down. We'll do a lot of our, um, you know, injury prevention stuff, a lot of core work, you know, with the upper classmen. Well, we take the, the younger guys into the weight room, work with them, um, you know, and then we can rotate that stuff. So then, hey, we can pick up the intensity. You know, we've got these older kids that, that understand the list a little bit better. They understand those techniques. Now we can get after them a little bit more. 
Yeah, that, that, that's that's awesome. I think if not, if nothing else, man, you definitely have a great grasp of this. And, um, you know, I don't think Nurk Alex is going to have to worry about, um, you know, there's always the freak injuries, the ACLs, the things yep. like that. But it sounds like you guys are going to be really prepped. And uh, speaking of prep, you know, kind of going from the off season um, and in the weight room, now kind of moving to kind of on the field. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with, uh, and I sent you the question in uh, um, the questions I sent you before or earlier yep. this week, uh, I'm familiar with like the Dartmouth innovations that they've been doing with the moving tackling dummies and the crash pads for tackling Um, because they've been finding a lot of concussions are actually not necessarily player to player impact, but even player to ground impact. Um, Are you using any of those things or any any thoughts about using the moving dummies or, um, or the crash pads themselves? Yes. We're not, we're not using so much those mobile dummies. Um, You know, I I still think you you need to, to work with, with an actual body. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think, I think everything that's been happening with all of this stuff I think it's great. You know, I, again, this, these are some other topics that I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of different people on. Um, this is ultimately making the game more safe. The game is safer than it has ever been, you know, and, and I think there's a huge misconception. Well, oh, CTE and, and all this stuff that's coming out and uh, it, football's terrible. No, no. Uh, you know, it, that's a whole nother conversation to get into some of the statistics that, that are being brought out and the data and, and, and everything that's happening with that. But the game is safer than it has ever been. What, what the high schools, um, you know, OHSA has, has regulated as far as contact and all that stuff. It's just making the game healthy, you know, it better. Um, you know, and, and to your point, I, I think you bring up a huge point with those head to ground injuries. You know, that's something that we're really working with our youth kids on. You know, a lot of these youth kids, they, they, they still don't even understand how to control their bodies yet. You know, you, you get, you know, little Johnny that, that's, you know, growing, um, you know, a little bit taller than what he can control. So he's still figuring that stuff out. So how he lands on the ground is huge. So I've really been working with our youth coaches on how to teach the proper tackling techniques, h- how to fall, you know, how you need to go into these contact situations and regulating that at those levels as well, not just at the high school level, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. Um, so, so back to your question, I'm sorry to no, no, drift off. No, that's perfect, right actually. Uh, uh, actually, one of the things I was going to kind of tack on there at the end is sometimes I don't think, and this is my own personal opinion, I don't think, and this is coming from a grappling kind of standpoint, I don't think mm-hmm. uh, hitting less is necessarily the answer. Yeah, Oklahoma drills blowing each other up every practice, that's not the answer. Yep. But, uh, you know, a nice pop, a nice form tackle every practice, mm-hmm. I know a lot of these schools have transitioned to the shorts and the shoulder pads, and it's kind of like a two hand touch once you get close yep. to the ball. And I am, you know, when you're shooting a takedown, I'm um, using wrestling as an example, it's very hard to develop the timing. It's very hard to develop the execution without actually yes. doing it. Um, yes. If that, I mean, I, I, I think that's, I think that would be more of the answer. That's kind of my opinion. Is that no, no. hitting more? I guess you're, you're exactly right, and that's that's what we build into. We will be building into our practices. It is structured, facilitated contact. We're not lining up 20 yards away from running one another and just sprinting full speed and knocking the crap out of each other. But those days were fun, weren't they? (laughs) Those days were fun, weren't they? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, we're we're just, we're not doing that stuff anymore. You know, Hey, we're working in a, a three to four yard environment. Hey, here's the situation. Where do you need to position your head? What do you need to do? Knee bend, hip bend, right? Head up at all times. You know, wh- how, what is my direction of contact based on the situation, right? Um, you know, when you're inside the box, your tackling technique is going to be a little bit different than when you're in the open field in a one-on-one tackle, right? Mm-hmm. It, it, it's a different type of contact, and it's important for those kids to understand what to utilize, what technique, what tackling technique to utilize in those situations. That will, that's what we're trying to educate our young men on and, and how to go about that. You know, a cut tackle, sweet tackle, roll tackle, right? Rugby tackle. You know, those are the types of things. When do I apply those situations? You know, the biggest thing for, for us as we go throughout our practices is just how do we facilitate competition, right? You know, that, that's going to be the biggest thing to our success as, as we move forward here. Um, you know, even more so than how many times we tackle because I'm a firm believer as well you know, I talked about mental and physical toughness as we went through and as we go through, you know, our, our winter, spring, summer condition, all that stuff. I mean, it's, it's very important, but I view that differently. I think certain kids, and, and what I mean by that is I, I think there's certain kids that have that mentality to tackle, which I don't think necessarily reflects your mental and physical toughness. And there's some kids that don't, 
right? And that's mm-hmm. okay. That, that's totally fine. You know, some kids just have a knack for tackling, right? There, there's certain kids that are faster than the other kids. I think it's the same thing. I really do. So how do I put these young em, young men in position to be successful, right? I can put a kid that maybe not be that great of a tackler, you know, and doesn't have that natural aggressive attitude. I can put him in a field corner and he could be an all conference corner for us, right? I can put him in a tight end and more of an offensive position. If he doesn't have that mentality, that's fine. I, you know, I don't want to have and force a kid that doesn't have that mentality to be in that position because now I'm setting him up for failure. Mm-hmm. Right. There's certain kids that just have that natural aggressive mentality and some kids that don't. And that's fine. But we still need to understand the proper fundamentals and techniques and how we go about those tackles. Mm-hmm. So so moving on, um, your coaching style, I know you were a defensive coordinator. Um, mm-hmm. Are you more offensive or defensive in style? Uh, definitely more defensive. I, I just every way, shape, you know. My, my influence with, with Coach Hoke, uh, being around him, I'll tell you, the first coach that I've ever been with that's been an offensive minus coach is, is Brian Cross. Anywhere else I've been, I've been around defensive coaches. Um, now, I will be heavily involved in what we're doing offensively, um, but I, my experience from a defensive perspective and, and how you know, I would break down games, you know, I, I know what I want to do. I, I know what I want us to do. Now that I'm around the kids, you know, more on a full-time basis. You know, we, we've got great numbers right now uh, that have been showing up for our workouts. You know, I'm starting to be able to identify what we can do, what we can do based on our personnel, you know, because that's what's ultimately going to drive it. You know, I could sit here and want to run the triple option, but if we don't have the kids to run the triple option, I, again, I'm setting them up for failure, right? Uh, so how do we put these kids in the best position to be successful uh, from an offensive and decent defensive standpoint? And that's what we're piecing together right now. You know, where can we put this young man? Uh, where would he be best served? How can he best serve this team w- within our scheme? Um, but, yeah, defensively, I, I've got uh, a young man that's on my staff uh, who's going to be a great addition to, to Newark Catholic here. I actually coach him at St. Joseph's College. His dad was actually my coach in high school. He's going to be a great addition. And we, we've got some great offensive coaches as well, um, you know, in addition to, to some coaches that I retained from the old staff too, just, just great uh, influences in what we're doing moving forward. Uh, what kind of offense are you going to be bringing to North Catholic? Yeah, so we're, again, you know, we're still kind of piecing that stuff together. Um, you know, we're going to do a lot of uh, 11, 12 personnel stuff. Um, I, I really want to focus on our inside outside zone schemes and, and, and work in uh, our play, play action, make a game off of that stuff. You know, I, I, um, I think it'll really create some opportunities and take advantage of, you know, what some, some teams do. And it, it's a tough read when you mirror those two things together. What that does in, in the one pass conflict that it puts linebackers and safeties in, I really think we can take advantage of some things there. Um, but we're, we're going to throw in a lot of tough stuff. You know, RPO game is going to be in there. Uh, you know, we'll do some of the zone read stuff in addition to the RPO stuff. Um, we're going to be pretty diverse with what we're doing offensively. Uh, ultimately, we're going to do whatever we need to do to win, right? <laughs> I mean, Whether that's we, hand we, the ball we, off we, a 31. got to pull out the triple option. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we'll pull out that triple option. Um, you know, I, I definitely think there's there's concepts that we need to stay true to, to, to make sure our players are picking up what we're doing. Um, but – that being said, whatever we need to do to win. Yeah, just, so, if you got a 31 dive at all day long, you're going to do it, right? <laughs> yeah, so what you're basically hey, saying I'll is – take three, four yards any day. Yep. So what you're basically saying is you want to score more points than the other team, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's that yeah, simple. Man, well, that guess what? We're, gonna, we're vying for your job now. If it's, <laughs> if it's that simple, then we're, we're all applying. Um, do you have any players to be on the lookout for this fall that you want to speak of? You know, I, I, uh, I place a lot of emphasis on – uh, on my seniors, right? Uh, their, their leadership, their, their mental maturity, their physical maturity. We've got a, a tremendous senior class moving into this season that I'm, I'm very excited for. Um, and, and each one of those young men are, are going to have a critical role to our success uh, because of that leadership position. So, uh, you know, really, I, I don't want to point out any individual. Uh, I, I apologize. I'm just really excited no, you're good. for you're good. our senior class and upperclassmen in general, I, I think I'm, I'm really, I'm really liking how they are evolving and adapting. You know, going through a coaching change is not easy. You know, especially like a tremendous coach like Bill Franks. He, you know, he had been there at least 16 years. I hope I'm not wrong on that. Um, that's a long time to 
you know, grow up and develop into that particular system. But these kids have been incredibly resilient and receptive to my ways, what we're doing, you know, this new coaching staff that we're bringing in. Uh, so I, I just couldn't be more excited about this senior class moving forward. So you have a, a similar situation to um, Ch- Coach Riley that was on the show with us, the Notre Dame soccer coach. He's actually mm-hmm. this this fall. He's actually play. He coached at Dartmouth. Comes back to Notre Dame and they're playing yeah. Dartmouth this year. And you, yeah. you're playing Reedy in your uh, scrimmage game. Uh, yes. Just, what, what's kind of some of your thoughts about playing your former school? No, really looking forward to it. You know, I, as I mentioned, uh, Coach Cross is just a tremendous mentor for me. You know, just getting acclimated with. Ohio high school football. Um, I, I had a lot of fun coaching with him, so it, it's going to be great. Uh, you know, they've got a great program over there. they got some great players. Uh, it's just going to be a great opportunity for, for us to get better. It, it's going to be a great test to, to measure where we're going to be at. Um, I, like I said, I know they've got a great squad coming back this year, so it, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I think what we can do and um, with that relationship is, is we're going to incorporate a little bit more than just a traditional scrimmage. You know, we're going to try to break this down. You see a lot of these NFL teams starting to practice against one another where they do one-on-one, seven-on-seven. You know, they can do half-line stuff. You know, that's really something that we're going to try to uh, incorporate into this scrimmage to really uh, benefit not just our, our varsity guys, but the younger guys as well. It's going to create more reps for everybody as well uh, to where they're all getting – uh, a, a good, you know, varsity on varsity, JV, JV, freshman on freshman look. Yeah, that that feels like it's more functional than just hopping on the Very bus, so. going to another school, and you know, mm-hmm. just you know, oh, you know, kicking each other's heads in for a, a, a basically a game that doesn't count, and then running away. Exactly. I mean, uh, especially if you you obviously have a good relationship with Reedy still. Um, I, th- I think uh, there's you know practice with people um, you know people it's not on the same team you know you get sick of hitting the same person I think that's definitely more applicable to uh, getting yes. ready for the year um, tell me some thoughts about uh, the, the Licking County League and do you have a, a game you're looking forward to on the schedule yeah the, the uh, I tell you what this league is incredible uh, there, there are some great players uh, great coaches you know I've, I've had the opportunity to watch a lot of film of, of the past uh past season you know we've got our hands full with that you know i I don't think there's one particular game you know our our sole focus right now has to be on our non-conference opponent um you know week one on on august 23rd versus maysville that's where our sole focus is we we just um we can't be looking forward to anything uh we we've just got to focus on august 23rd here but uh i'm really looking forward to being a part of this conference and and going through it like i said there's some great coaches great players um, respect the heck out of them already from what I've seen on film. So just, just looking forward to get started with the season overall, but Maysville number one. So he's definitely got the Lou Holtz talking up Purdue down. He's definitely got that. <laughs> one. That was, that was good. That, Lou would be proud. That was good. That was awesome. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. Uh, so, uh, coach been kind of keep my eye out on things. And even on the radio, I heard you're running a uh, women's camp, uh, this summer. Um, mm-hmm. you want to kind of tell us a little bit about that and, you know, what's, what's your ultimate goal with, with putting that camp on? Yeah, well, thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate it. You know, part of that um, as well, going back to, you know, how we're getting in touch with alumni. Um, I know they're not football alumni, right, but but we're reaching out to alumni that, that are still from Newark Catholic. So different way to, to gauge a, a different type of audience that's very important uh, to our success moving forward, right? So we're, we're reaching out for this women's clinic. This will be the first annual women's clinic on July uh, 28th. We're going to go from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, this is just an opportunity, again, to reach a different audience at a different level. Uh, so we're, we're, we're calling out anybody over the age of 18. So, uh, you know, current, you know, moms of the program, you know, past moms of the program, uh, anybody that's been affiliated with Newark Catholic. Yeah, hey, two B moms, right? You know, if you just graduated, great, come on out. You know, this is just an opportunity for us. I, I think it's more from uh, an educational standpoint. You know, all the things that we discuss with with tackling and what Dartmouth is doing, this is our opportunity to really educate, you know, our moms on what we're teaching their young men. You know, we're going to have some fun. We're going to do some drills very similar to youth camp. It's going to be a lot of fun. But um, for me, it's, it's really how do we engage a different audience, number one. And then number two, how do we educate these parents on, on what we're, um, excuse me, these, these moms on what we're teaching their young men. So how, how does someone go about signing up for that? So we've got we've got forms uh, all over the place on our website, the, the Newark Catholic website. Uh, those forms should all be under the camp link right there. Uh, so they can print one of those off, and all they got to do is fill it out, send it to the school, uh, to our athletic director, athletic director Scott Harris. We will take walk-ups on on July 23rd for the youth camp and on July 28th 
for the women's camp. So they can just print out the form and, and come up for walk-up registration as well, whatever suits them best. Very nice. I think that's definitely an awesome outreach, especially, you know, you, it almost is like a, a line drawn right now with football. You have part of, part of the people, all oh, football's the devil. Um, and then, <laughs> you know, right. on, the, on the other side, you have us that are like, oh, no, you know, the football, you know, they're making changes. Things are good, you know. And like you said, I, I, I agree with the emphasis on the on the concussions and things. I think that's a – I think the game is definitely probably safer than it's ever been. Oh, definitely. Um, we got a couple more for you, Coach. We'll get you out of here. We know your time is yeah, valuable. Yeah, um, uh, this time to brag on yourself a little bit. Uh, what's a you know favorite moment, favorite accomplishment from as a coach and as a player? Oh man, yeah, I, I'd tell you. Um, I, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap them all up into one. I guess I, you know going back to that too, and, and I've been very fortunate through my career to have been a part of a lot of different unique games, comeback games, dominant wins. Uh, again, both as a, as a player. Um, and as a coach, but I, I tell you, going back to that 2008 season, when we beat Western Michigan uh, to conclude the year, a, as emotional as it was, you know what we had to put into that from the preparation standpoint, you know just just Ball State re- receiving that type of attention, you know we we had news crews, ESPN coming out, it just something that we had an experience to to close out on that win, to have that accomplishment, you know we our stands were packed. Um, I mean, that was a sellout crowd. They stormed the field afterwards. That was probably um, one, uh, just one special moment that, that I'll never forget. You know, again, it's just a very emotional season to go through. That, that was that was very special for me. Nice. Yeah, that that was an awesome season, and I'm a college football junkie. Um, these guys are too, and that I mean, I followed the I follow the action. Tuesday night action is amazing. Right. Uh, I love it, and uh, yeah, that was a fun season for you guys. Um, shame kind of how it ended, but it was a fun fun ride yeah. there for uh, yes. for sure. Now you had um I, something I kind of should have maybe asked earlier, but you had an injury that uh, while you were at Ball State, correct? And that's why you yeah. Didn't so I would play I any was further. A, uh... Yeah, I, I was a walk-on safety, you know, at Ball State. You know, I, I probably, I'll be honest, I probably would have been a special teams player, best-case scenario. You know, I, I just uh, wanted to play at that level. I loved the game so much, just didn't want to give it up. Um, but, yeah, I, I just – wear and tear. You know, we, we talked about that lifting stuff. You know, there, there's things that uh, I could have done better uh, to, to just create a, a healthier uh, – more healthy opportunity for me moving forward and my back just I got a lot of disc issues um you know going down through the leg all that other stuff bulging discs you know I've had to do the injections and all that stuff so uh, you know that's why the the weightlifting aspect of of what we're doing is so important to me because I've been there you know I, I understand what poor technique can do to you and, and that's my you don't get me wrong our strength coach at ball state was phenomenal um unbelievable he taught me so much you know i, I think it's just I, I had not paid attention to some of those small details going throughout my high school and uh collegiate career that that's what got me ultimately uh so i i had to get out but you know it ended up being a blessing in disguise uh, because that's when Coach Hoke offered me the opportunity to get involved with coaching and that was a very special experience and again ultimately what got me here today yeah yeah. And, and coach, don't sell yourself short. We all know you were bound to be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you were the next, you were the next Zach Thomas, Ed Reed. We know it. Yeah. We know yeah. it for sure. I saw the future uh, and, and you were right there putting on that I gold jacket. That, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, real quick, uh, before we, we'll get one more for you. We'll let our, uh, our uh, alumni on set kind of finish you up. But, um, you got any team shirts or anything this year? We'd definitely be willing to purchase some shirts, rock them on the show if you have any, like, you know, actual team shirts or anything. Um, yeah, we have yeah, a West Coast affiliate. Great called the dose leprechauns and uh they just asked if they, they'd rock them on their show too out in la so uh oh definitely yeah we would love to hook you guys with some of that stuff i'm actually trying to design those right now met with the guy uh, <laughs> this past week to get those things set up so uh, as soon as i get those in my hand I'll, I'll be sure to get those out to you guys oh, i appreciate it man i appreciate it and we'll have aaron get you out of here on this one go ahead Aaron. so coach uh last year you know catholic kind of struggled a little bit three and seven mm-hmm. on the season you know, it was a little, little on the low side in terms of offensive uh, firepower. What's your goal with your program in your first year coming in, soaking everything up? What, what, what's your goal? You know, great, great question, Aaron. Um, I, I tell you, my focus right now, I, I, I just talked about the process. Um, you know, I, I think success is won right now. 
you know, success is not one just every Friday night. Now we play Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, but um, it's not just one on those games. You know, it, it has to do with your preparation, that, that process there that, that I discussed. We've got to focus on that. You know, what can we control right now? You know, we can't control what happens in the fourth quarter when we're only in the first quarter. This is something that I preach to these kids every single day. Focus one rep at a time. Focus on what you can control, your job. That's it. If, if I can get our kids to understand the importance of that, and not just from a football standpoint, from, from a life standpoint, that will be a success, and we will have success as a result of that. We've just got to focus on the process, control what we can control, compete against one another, and I, I, we're going to have some good results as, as long as we continue to focus on that against Maysville. Yeah, looking hey, forward to it. So, so real quick, Coach, uh, I'm going to throw this question out there to you. It might catch you off Please. guard. Um, you got a pretty good beard game going on there. Do you use that, <laughs> any like beard oil or anything like that? So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is yeah, this is this is a good topic for me. Uh, so, so my wife actually encouraged me to grow this beard. So I wasn't sure how to take it. Right. So you're pretty much just saying, you know, you don't like two thirds of my face and how I look. <laughs> want to cover it up. Yeah. So what, what's, what's going on here? Uh, but no, she encouraged it. She loves it. Uh, so I'm keeping it out. I, I, I will admit, you know, I, I did have kind of the, the beard balm, beard oil going there for nice. a little bit, but I, I've since uh, taken away from all that stuff and uh, I, I just let it go. Try to keep it trimmed up the best I can. <laughs> awesome. And so it asks the question, who, who's talking to us, the beard or coach ILO? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, coach, we really appreciate your time, sir. We're definitely going to so be, much, we're definitely going to be on board with the wave. I've always been a wave fan. My uncle played for the 82 state title team. So we oh, have a, awesome. we have some ties there. He played for uh, coach Graham back in the eighties. And uh, actually his best friend in high school was uh, Jeff Yulenhake. If I can name drop a little bit. So, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, it's always a fun, my like mild like story of fame and my mom actually used to my mother too, used to take uh Yul and Hake and my uncle to practice so it's always oh, a cool wow. story to tell people so oh, that's uh, pretty special. Yeah. yeah so uh yeah coach we appreciate it we're definitely going to be uh definitely going to come to some games this fall uh awesome. we look forward to the shirts definitely and uh hey my little cousin kyler dales is going to be at your uh camp actually oh uh, great yeah so thir- he's a third grader so uh yeah, he, awesome. yeah, Kyler Dales, uh, do not take it light on this kid. He, yeah, he, give it to him, coach. Give, give it, it to him. him. <laughs> so, uh, a little bit. I, I, I think I can do that. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we'll be in touch, sir, and uh, go wave. Take it easy, yeah, man. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Really do appreciate it. Uh, go green. Have a good one, sir. Thanks, coach. You too. Bye. Bye. Well, that was our uh, first coach's spotlight interview with uh, Coach ILO from North Catholic. Um I'm anxious now. Uh, this is a great interview, by the way. I thought it, I thought he was awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, really good. Yeah, I'm I'm pumped. I think the program's in good hands. Uh, and not just saying that because I mean I am I'm a Nerd Catholic fan. I, it, it's in our family, um, and uh, even if it wasn't, I, I like their traditions and stuff like that. But um, I that aside, I think this program, any program he would touch, I think is in good hands. Look, I'm not a Newark Catholic fan. Yeah, uh, I'm not from Newark. I'm from. Well, I'm from all over, but I graduated from Gahanna. You're homeless. The world yeah. is your home. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but man, talking to him, he makes me want to go to a game. Yeah, so. just right down the road. We'll make it happen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I'm anxious, to, Aaron. What's your thoughts, man? You're the alum. Uh, you've watched this. Per- you've been a part of it. You've watched it after. You've watched kind of the rise, fall, rise, fall. Because the last few, uh, I wouldn't say you guys have fallen on hard times. Because you know you were nine and five a couple of years ago. But last year, three and seven is unacceptable anywhere, especially North Catholic. So what are your thoughts on that? Coach Aiello. I mean, I, th- I think I think Coach hit on a lot of great points in that interview. <clears throat> I like uh, I like his vision in the weight room. Um, I feel like a lot of big things could start happening there. Uh, moving forward to practices, a little bit uh, sounds like he's going to be big on you know efficiency, getting kids more reps, really developing from from a young age, which is going to be huge. So uh, I, I really see big things in Catholic's future. Um, you know, not to take anything away from Coach Franks, he was there for. 16, 17 years. I can't remember what the exact number was, but uh, but towards the end there, I think there was a little bit of stuff that kind of started to trickle. That was kind of that foundation of, of where Catholic was. So I uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm anxious um, to see where, where he takes Catholic. You know, three and seven. That's that, that's a that's a tough lick to take, especially at Catholic. You know, if we're not in the playoffs making a run, it's it's kind of a, a, a disappointment in a sense. So 
Um, look to see him turn things around, get back into the playoffs, and, and make a run at state title. So, yeah, man, I, I think you guys are definitely in good hands. Good hands for sure, for sure. So let's talk about you a little bit there, Shook. You're new. You're new to the team. Um, yeah, uh, going to be a contributor for us. I'm really excited about that. So you played for the 07 state title team. I've t- talked about that enough. Um, he's got his varsity jacket here. We were going to wear him, but it's hot as hell in here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think tell- it's hotter in here than it is outside. I, and it's I, like, I do. And it's like 97 outside. And the air, condi- <laughs> the air conditioning is even on in this house. So, uh, yeah, man, tell us about uh, – Go ahead. Put yourself on a platform. Tell us about your uh, accomplishments. Act like we're back in triage, back at looking together. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a little story about Greg and I. We'd be stuck in triage at 3 in the morning doing the old Varsity Letterman throwback talks. But uh, oh, the, so, oh, back in my day. You know, you remember that time? <laughs> yeah. We did. We did. Well, so here's – let me set the scene a little bit so everybody understands what we're talking about. We're both nurses. You were a tech at the time. Yeah. Uh, we'd be stuck in triage. We work night shift. Um, if anybody doesn't know what triage is in an ER, that's the first place you go. You get your vital signs, this and that. I'm an ER nurse. Believe it or not, they let people take care – me take care of people. Yeah, old joke. <laughs> Laugh it up. Anyhow, some nights we actually did get slow. We're a rural hospital. Hospital. Um, we do take care of most of the county, but some every now and then you get slow. I was very fortunate to have this guy um, developed a great friendship with him, um, you know, working there and stuff. But, uh, you know, overnight your inhibitors get a little shot. Uh, you go in, you want to eat some grilled chicken instead of you go with the chicken fettuccine and some chips and a Mountain Dew. Oh, and uh, yeah, man, my heart hurts. <laughs> <laughs> you do. You, you do. I, as one thing I learned on night shift is like that was even back when I ate good. But you get a few crappy patients hollering and screaming at you, some psych patients, and you get downstairs and you're like, screw it. Grilled chicken and a salad, forget that noise. I want, I want something <laughs> yeah. bad. Yeah. I want some stress foods. Then it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, get a little slow, and me and him would start some – and this happened more than once. We would start some uh, – well, when I, my senior year, I uh, my junior year, and then, uh, oh, man. Well, by the time we were out of there, I had a gold jacket on. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we were always talked about doing – we may do end up doing a show with, like, our varsity jackets on, but we definitely – we outdid Oakle Rico by – by both mountains. Oh, he threw Rico to no chance. Yeah, he, he yeah. threw it over, he only threw it over one mountain. Yeah. That's, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he threw it over all the mountains. So uh <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Aaron, tell us about uh your high school career a little bit. Yeah, we'll talk about the ride a little bit. So uh came in, went through Saint Francis, did all the I don't know, what you want to call them, the the upcoming years. Went through uh junior high with coach uh, Jim Marquis who has since passed. He was a part of every uh state championship at North Catholic, so it was cool growing up. Uh, having him barking in your ear, keeping you, keeping your foundation true. But uh, I remember coming into freshman year of high school, um, Christmas the prior year, I got the book, Growing Up Green. So got to read and kind of uh, put into perspective how big of a deal it was coming into that environment. Freshman year, uh, played freshman football. Uh, a buddy of mine, his dad was the head coach. We had a fairly decent year, played a bunch of county teams. Um Got into wrestling freshman year, uh, made varsity as a freshman, went, uh, went, I had a decent season. I think I went like 39 and 11 or something like that. And then turned around and uh, got pulled up to varsity for freshman year baseball, won a state title there. That was uh, an awesome experience being a part of. A lot of great athletes, good upperclassmen, good lowerclassmen contributing. Really, uh, really helped them bring everything together. So it was state title number one freshman year. So that was, that was huge. Coming into sophomore year, um, so at Catholic, freshmen cannot – it used to be they could not play varsity football, so that was completely off the table from day was, one. Was that a New Newark Catholic rule? Or, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there was okay. no freshman that could be on the varsity team. Did, okay. Um, so then sophomore year, you know, you're coming in, you're gearing up, trying to step into those shoes of, you know, the varsity Newark Catholic football team, uh, even, you know, trying to make special teams at that point because everybody's gunning for it. Um, I was – Really, really fortunate. Worked real hard uh, in the off season. Made a, a starting position as an outside linebacker as a sophomore, and um, we uh, can't remember. I think we went six and four my sophomore year. Uh, had a pretty tough league that year. We made the playoffs. Playoffs. Uh, I think it was an injury or something. I ended up having to go both ways. I went played outside linebacker and then played uh, running back our first game of uh, playoffs, and we got beat by Fisher Catholics. That ended our run. Sophomore year wrestling went pretty well. Um, made a deep run of the district tournament. Fell a little short of the states, so uh, kind of put a little, little something on my shoulder. I was, you know, out to make a statement at that point. It was getting a little swagger to me and and figuring out where I was. So um, sophomore year varsity baseball again. We lost in the state championship that year 
to uh, a team from up north. I can't remember who we played, but um, had to been it had to have been like I don't know Michigan or something. If it, if you guys were getting beat, right? It had to have been like Michigan State or something. something man. Yeah, was, something like that. Didn't yeah. matter what happened yeah. to the season. Every year we made that run, and uh, it was fun. But uh, there ended up being a little bit of turmoil with uh, the football workouts and and baseball and stuff. Coach was a saying, you know, hey, you guys aren't throwing right. You got to quit working out for football. And it's like, hey, I know we're, we're a big baseball school, but, you know, football is what it was built upon. So ended up uh, after that year, I decided to quit playing baseball and focus just on football and wrestling. So junior year of football, we came in. I think we had 20 seniors coming in coming in that year. And, uh, you know, I was a junior, still trying to fight to keep keep a starting spot. Um Ended up being starting fullback. Had we had the Division Six player, offensive player of the year, uh, was our running back Mark Nichols. He was a transfer in from Missouri, and uh, kid was a freak. It was an absolute uh, pleasure to block for him. Played some defense, some inside linebacker, and uh, that was the absolute most fun year of football I've ever played. Everybody on the same page. You know, you walk in the locker room, everybody's just bloodthirsty, ready to get out there, get it done, get that W put on the board. Um, it's crazy to think. That year, our closest game through winning a state title was the uh, first round against uh, Sugar Grove Burn Union. Oh, no kidding. Winning 21 to 14 at White's Field. And then I don't want to say we walked through the state tournament, but my gosh, I mean, we were putting some numbers up. Um, I think the state final game, we were up 28 to nothing in the first quarter, and we coasted into the fourth quarter. The final score was like 28 14. Oh, wow. But uh, the reason I sound so shocked for people that don't know, and especially our West Coast listeners, um, Burn Union is just bad around. It. I mean, <laughs> that, that, I mean that's the best way I can describe it. There, there. Unfortunately, it is a poor area. Uh, there's not in, much industry down there, and they're just not good. And so, for them to have the, that kind of year at all is kind of impressive. So, yeah. So then that uh, that led me into junior year of wrestling, and uh, had gone to some camps up at OSU. Um, OSU was really starting to take some. Uh, dominance into into their program with you know the Lance Palmers, the Jay Jaggers, and all that stuff. So went up, so essentially spent a good majority of the summer up there training, and uh, it, it was awesome. So the toughest part was we came out of a deep run to the state football tournament, and I had a week to make weight for our first tournament of the year. So it was it was an interesting first week. You know, your your cardio every day, you're you're cutting weight. Um, we come into the tournament, did really well, and uh, junior year ended up going. Uh, I don't remember what the record was, like forty and five or something. Make something up. I yeah, sure. Forty. It's, like, it's been like fifteen years now. One hundred and zero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was okay though. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. Right. yeah. I was just all right. <laughs> so we get into the district tournament. District tournaments being held at Heath High School. It was great. Pretty much being on home turf, and uh, I want to say it was my district semifinal match of wrestling a kid, and I sprained my ankle. I'm like, I mean, I'm I'm done. I'm shot. I don't know what I'm gonna do. So we go back, taped it up. We we got one more one more win on the board. We got my first berth of the state tournament, and uh, it, it was it was an awesome experience. You know, you're you're walking into the Jerome Shot and Scene Center, just packed to the max with Division One through Division Three schools, families, everybody's in support, and uh, state tournament didn't go so hot. Junior year came in, won the first match. Uh, lost the second match to the kid that ended up winning the state. And uh, first time I'd been put on my back that year, and I don't even remember what happened. He, he actually he blacked me out. So Did um, I win? Did I win? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I came back, too, and I'm looking around like, this this isn't good, man. Yeah. But uh, then I won a ultimate tie – or I'm sorry, I lost an ultimate tiebreaker. Um, went like four overtimes with a kid that went on to be a two-time state champ. So that – that was a tough one to take, but then it led me into senior year of football. It was a rough year. I think we went uh, six and four. We didn't make the playoffs. Managed to blow my knee out about halfway through playing against Granville, and I was given the option from uh, Sports Med Doc in Grand or for, in uh, Columbus. He said, "Hey, listen, you know we can we can rebuild your patella tendon, and be done for a year, maybe play in college or do some do some PT, and you can go finish your senior year of sports." So we opted for that. Senior year wrestling went really well. Uh, beat some pretty big opponents. Beat some prior state champs from up in the Toledo area, um, all the way down to Cincinnati Moeller and uh, Cincinnati Elder. That uh, I guess I should maybe backtrack a little bit. So the summer going into my senior year, tag teamed with uh, some boys from Westchester, Lakota West, 
and uh, we went and wrestled some national stuff. Uh, went down to Florida, took third, took third at the national tournament, which was which was a lot of fun. And it kind of puts into perspective for you what uh, the scale is in Ohio versus the rest of the country. Oh, you know, you've got Ohio, you've got PA, and you've got New Jersey, essentially gunning for everything. So it was cool to go down there, see the variations in technique and everything. But you know, coming home with a bronze in a national tournament was was fun. So anyhow, for, we'll fast forward back to senior wrestling. Had a really good season. Um, let's see. I think uh lost my first match in the CIT finals senior year. I uh, got beat by a kid from St. Charles who went on to wrestle at OSU. And then um, got beat twice in the state tournament. It was an absolute heartbreaker. Didn't see that happening, but it is what it is. And, and that was the end of the high school career. It was... Uh, that's why you go out there, though, and that's what makes wrestling. I mean, it's it, it's not just a physical game; and it's such a mental game. I mean, even, you know, training jujitsu, it's a similar art. You know, it's a grappling kind of sport, but it is it's it's different. I mean, if your mind's not there, or, you know, one thing goes wrong. That especially at that level, the level you were wrestling at, like you know, maybe you missed an arm drag, or you know, you just just was a half second too slow on a shot, I and mean, that that's it. That's it at that level. Man, it can even be as much as you just woke up and just didn't weren't feeling it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and more so probably in any other sport because you don't have teammates. Yeah, it's all you. Yeah, it's it is all, all you. you. I mean, your coach can do all the hollering and screaming and everything like that and be telling you the exact right things to do. And even if you might do the exact right things, but there's always a counter to a counter to a counter. There is nothing worse than when a coach is like, just do this. And I'm like, I'm trying. <laughs> I swear to God. Easy, I would do it. I <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, oh, that's all I got to do? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the worst is when you get to these tournaments and we see it all the time. Uh, is when you see the coaches that don't know what they're talking about, and they're just like, "Get out of there!" Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't let them take your back. Don't, don't, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No shit. Huh? Yeah. Got it. I'll tell Breathe. You, tell you guys a, a funny story. Is cussing allowed on the air? Yeah. yeah. yeah oh man. my gosh. All right. And so, if it's a, if it's an f bomb, make sure it's well placed so and funny. Jason Boucher be funny. and Bob Priest. <laughs> if you guys are on this show, because I know you guys are Notre Dame supporters, my guy, give me a love here. So uh, let's see. It was the match that I sprained my ankle. I'm on bottom, and this kid's trying to ride me out. I'm trying to get up. And Bob Priest is in the corner. He's got his pebbles in his hands, and he's like screaming over and over, "You gotta move! You gotta <laughs> yeah, move! You gotta move!" And I got a bum ankle. All I can think about is how the hell I'm gonna get off the mat after the match. And finally, it ends, and he's still screaming, "You gotta move!" I look over, I'm like, "I'm fucking trying." <laughs> yeah, Shut up, dude. yeah. I'm, I'm fucking trying. Yeah, well done. That's, so, uh, that, yeah, that's that. You gotta move. <laughs> No shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't stay here? Thanks, man. Oh, no doubt. But yeah. I'll never forget that match. That's yeah. the most uh, frustrated I've ever been. Yeah. But, uh, no, I mean, I, I've been there before. You know, I remember it was like my second Purple Belt tournament. Because, unfortunately, my first Purple Belt tournament, now that we're dating ourselves on this show, <laughs> let, 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 let us live. Everybody's tuned out at this point anyway. Yeah. Um, I remember my first Purple Belt tournament went so well that I thought, well, shoot, that was the problem. I was competing at Blue Belt. <laughs> yeah. like, so then I, get a, I sign up for this tournament down in Cincinnati, and uh, I go against a guy I knew. In the match, I lost 0-0 on an advantage. Was, so I'm still in that mindset of like, all right, it's okay, whatever. Well, then I get this guy that, like, I, I'm sure he's a black belt by now. He'd won some at least placed in some Pan Am stuff. And I was on bottom down like 18 to nothing. And all, and I started laughing. <laughs> yeah. I started laughing at one point because I couldn't even escape bottom. I couldn't even get to like a neutral position. And I was just trying to give things to try to, because yeah. I, I just wanted out of there. Yeah, like, yeah. And I didn't, I wanted to get tapped. And it's the first time I, I probably ever said this, that I wanted to get tapped because I didn't want his hand raised and the scoreboard to show that. Yeah. <laughs> usually, usually what they do is they reset the scoreboard before they raise your hand. Yeah. So ultimately I had to stand there at 22 to nothing and he gets his hand raised yep. i'm just like oh that's awful um so that that's funny thanks aaron for sharing all that you're definitely definitely the perfect one to have on this show for as a north catholic guy um portugal just scored for those keeping score at home uh uh will does still have pants on surprisingly <laughs> his, his boy ronaldo is playing um so i'm kind of going to get on a rant here a little bit i know we're a little over an hour but uh something i was just thinking about is working out today and um yeah what do you think, Will? You think this is one of the best World Cups we've had? You know, it, maybe. I, I really think. I think you're seeing some of the best soccer played. Yeah, I, I don't disagree, and I. I mean, I know I'm not on your level with soccer. Uh, I'm a big international fan uh, because of you and my son. You know, he he thinks he likes it. He likes watching the ball. 
go back and forth. Um, we've been getting into the, some of the cl- uh, bigger club soccer, and I've always been a Neymar fan. But I'm telling you, it's just striking a chord with me because I do like soccer, and I'm not. I'm. I don't have a platform yet to where I can call people out, um, especially locally, because I could just get buried. So. Um, <laughs> Let me see how I want to approach this. Basically, I heard a local sports guy oh, talk about he gave some World Cup updates and just kind of just bulldogged World Cup and soccer and just, man, you could tell his tone was off. And I didn't like his tone when I listened to it. And I was like, whatever, it's fine. I'm not going to let this get to me. And then he uh, then he proceeded to take it a little further and say, you know, soccer's just not my thing. If it's your thing, more power to you. I just don't get it. Don't really like it. Da, 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 da. I don't hate it. But then he went on to go 30 minutes of golf coverage. <laughs> and yeah. you lost me there. Um, inst- I give anybody who doesn't even remotely like, if you don't, if it's not your thing, you don't have time. Like, I respected Jerry's answer on the Karate in the Garage episode of, I get that. You got a kid. You got time. There's only so many hours in the day. I, and that's the only answer I can accept if you don't like this sport. Um, the, oh, they flop too much. Well, how about on a two-minute drive when somebody pulls a cap? Uh, you know, oh, I got a cramp in my cap. Yeah, he just sits down on the field. He sits down on the field. Uh, you know, it, it's boring. They stand around a lot. Well, how about the reviews we have right now? Um, let's see. What's some other excuses? Well, there's only a couple teams at the top. Uh, hello, NBA. Nice yeah. to meet you, NBA. Yeah. How's things going over there? Um, I mean, it just excuse after excuse. I give anybody that's not a fan or won't give it a chance. I give you four years, and then I'm and then I'm going to become that soccer fan that no, I don't even want you anymore because it's annoying. It's frustrating as hell. These guys are athletes. I'm a baseball fan. I'm a huge baseball fan. In fact, it might be my favorite sport. But you want to talk about boring? How many? I mean, baseball can be a boring sport if you don't understand it. Well, you look you look at football. And what do they say? The average actual action in a game yeah. is, what, five minutes yeah, in exactly. an entire game. And there is no better time than now. You know, it, forget Ronaldo, forget Messi, forget even Neymar. Because um, you want to. So another argument is, uh, oh, well, it's only a couple guys at the top, Ronaldo and Messi. No, there's no better time. We have Lukaku. We got Mbappe, who is uh, 19 years old. Uh, Pogba. You got, uh, uh, help me out here. You got uh, Iniesta, right? Iniesta, uh, uh, Luka Modric. Luka Modric. You got Lewandowski, Bayern Munich, uh, Thomas Mueller, which he still can't be found off the German national team. <laughs> but uh, it, somebody will find oh, he, him. They found him. He's at the airport on his way home. Uh, he never got off to. Be oh there, yeah, so. that's right. That's right. <laughs> my point is, there is no better time to get involved with the sport. There's superstars all over the place. Whether or not you give EPL a chance, whether or not you give uh, Bundesliga a chance, La Liga, uh, League One with uh, with uh, the French uh, league, give that a chance. Hell, you even give the ML- MLS a chance. If we start building a following on the MLS, even though it's not great. If we demand a better product, we're not going to get 58 year old Wayne Rooney in the league. Ugh. We're going to get actual we're gonna get actual talent we're gonna get the u.s back into the world cup it's just frustrating as hell to listen to these guys like or, and then you see the meme of like of a guy sitting watching paint dry and he's like i'd rather watch this than soccer yeah. and stuff and i'm like these guys are freaking athletes you know and i get the flopping kind of gets on people's nerves and the lack of scoring well you know what if you didn't understand baseball you'd think it was boring if you didn't understand the nfl you'd think it was boring so i don't know that's all i got it and it really just prompted by just some local media just not giving these guys the credit that they deserve. And this and this World Cup coupled that with the World Cup being so great this year. I mean, I think it. it I personally think it's one of the best we've had. You know, I, I, I'm a big soccer guy, all right? Um, I, no, I do, yeah. never. I do play other sports. Did and you I, play? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, I do watch other sports, and I do enjoy other sports, except for golf. Sorry, all you golf fans. Yeah. It's just not for me. Um, I'm not going to bash it, though. If that's what you like, do what you like. Um, but, you know, I start to question, if you look from a physical standpoint, is soccer the hardest sport to play? Because, I mean, if you think about it, like you play football, you got to run, you got to tackle, there's a lot of skill involved. You got to throw a ball, you got to catch a ball, but you get to use your hands. Right. You talk about basketball. Okay, you, you got to put a, a ball in a cylinder. That's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. But again, you get to use your hand. We always talk about hand-eye coordination. When you when you start talking about soccer, you're not allowed to use your hands. You have to use your your feet. So it's a matter of running, sprinting as fast as you can, touching a ball, passing a ball, shooting a ball, all with your feet. 
Yeah, and it's not to bash. I'm not taking this rant to a place of bashing other sports. That's fine. If, and all, no, no. And no. other sports are great. The point is, is it's like, ugh, soccer. Mm. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. It just struck a nerve when I heard a guy downplay soccer, and he went on to piggyback 25 minutes of golf coverage. Yeah. It just blew my mind. I think some of it is, is if you look at soccer in the United States, it's a um, it tends to be a more middle to upper class sport. Okay. Um <clears throat> and I think that's part of the downfall of U.S. soccer. Uh, because you think about, like, we always talk about soccer moms in their brand new minivans and everything like that. Those are some nice minivans, though. Mm, those are some <laughs> nice soccer moms, too. So, <laughs> but anyways, uh, <laughs> hope you're not listening, Jen. Um, <laughs> but anyways, uh, I you mean. You have nowhere so, to live. I have an extra room, so. <laughs> Yeah, hey. Uh, so so we're going to we'll do daily podcasts now because me and the <laughs> live together. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know, just something I noticed. And I hope you guys, I actually got complimented yesterday on some of our articles. I haven't finished the last two. Oh, oh Cavani! Cavani just put in a goal. That's his second. Way. That's his second. Might just put. That uh, was beautiful, too. 30 minutes-ish left in this game, and Portugal uh, might be going home. Ronaldo may be going the way of Messi. Didn't you call that? You thought Portugal was getting put down? Yeah, yeah. 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 I, thought that, I thought, you know, you had Argentina play today with Messi, who's the second best player in the world, and then you had Portugal with Ronaldo, who's the best player in the world. And I would... In, before my soccer game this morning, I told my team, I was like, this is where we see the two best players in the world leave the World Cup. Yep. And the third best player in the world is going to win it. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right. We'll see. We'll see. That being Neymar. Um, yeah, man. So I, I, I'm glad to um, kind of get back on our articles. I, I haven't got to our last two yet um, on the most disappointing team in the World Cup and then the uh, yeah. most surprising. Um, obviously, you probably know who I'm picking for most disappointing in yeah. Germany. Yep. And would you disagree, though? No, not at all. Yeah. But but I will say, and I can't believe I didn't see this, um, they followed suit with the last two World Cup winners yeah. Yeah. to lose in the group stages. And it was bound to happen. It's just how it happened. It's on the line. Number one team in the in the world, number 57. Like mm -hmm. If they lose to, let's say they lose to Mexico and get put out, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Yeah. But you lost to Korea. Korea. South Korea. Oh, South Korea. Yeah. Uh, Not even the good Korea. Yeah. You just lost to South Korea and got put got sent home. So, uh, and then my most surprising. Let me see if you agree with this before I do the article. Is um, mine's Croatia, and it's again the way they went about it. Not that they advanced, but the fact that they just came. Like I said in another article, they just came to see who was going to finish second. Yeah, I I, I don't a hundred percent disagree with that. If you just said Croatia was like two or three. Maybe because I mean they just straight up dominated. Yeah. Um, Uruguay might have been the the number one most in my opinion because they didn't give up one single goal. And I know I spoke about uh, Diego Godin who plays defense for for Uruguay, but man, they came out and they just squashed everybody. Yeah. So I I don't know. I, I think Croatia should be in. Being a, the a only reason I didn't list. pick Uruguay to even in my top four of most surprising is because how weak that that group was. That group was terrible. That was Russia, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt. Yeah. That group yeah. was just... Okay. I mean, I, mean I, I didn't see one publication, including us, that picked uh, Uruguay even to finish second. Everybody had them win in that group. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it, it, albeit impressive, they got all nine points and, you know, weren't scored upon. But, uh, yeah, that group was just terrible. We might, we might collectively make a better soccer team than, like, Saudi Arabia. So, <laughs> yeah right so uh yeah um so what do we got coming up here let's see we got the private show next week which topic to be announced um it's going to be on location as in in my backyard um those of you that don't know this uh <laughs> aaron's sweating over <laughs> yeah. here he's so excited for the private show next week he's sweating yeah he so, got he got super excited Yeah, he got a little excited his pants actually came off first that's interesting <laughs> um so we got that going on next week um so that'll be cool um i know i said it's on location somewhere it's in our backyard uh, DJ Digital Input, Kent Price, he's going to come out. And probably what we're going to do is, as I said on the last show, um, or the last announced, major announcement show, we have the live show coming up at Dempsey's, and there's so many things that can go wrong. We're not going to try to plug into their house equipment and, like, surround sound overhead. What we're going to do is we're going to use Kent's soundboard, and we're going to use all his equipment, his speakers, the whole nine, and he's going to essentially kind of sit in the back in the dark corner like Kent, a creepy Kent would. So. Mm, I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Kent can't get any love. <laughs> yeah. Can't get any love even on his birthday. And he's just going to serve as like a producer role for us. Um, Is and, he going to be our Jamie? 
he's going to kind of be our Jamie, this but he's probably not awesome. going to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, he's so, just going to have that smile. Yeah, he's just going to have that smile. <laughs> so uh, really, it, it's going to be good because and being on live on location somewhere is a completely different animal. And so me and Will, and if Jerry's on, and Aaron, if you can come on, and I know we're, in, we're trying to work on a former Notre Dame player to come on with us, and I know Mark, if not, either way, Mark Hassam going to be on with us to talk about the Notre Dame fan club of Columbus and how to be involved. Cause I think a lot of the local alumni, there's like 3000 or 4,000 Notre Dame alumni in Columbus. And only like, I want to say it's less than a thousand that have been reached out to, or even participated one time in a game watch party. So it'd be cool to, you know, let Mark explain that, start doing the word of mouth thing, which still exists despite Twitter and Facebook and all that. So, um, but me and Will, we can just concentrate on doing the show and not me serving as my own producer. So we're doing a live show in the backyard next week, talk to, to be announced and, uh, it just kind of a live or, uh, basically a dress rehearsal of, um, of, you know, how, how a live show is going to go. Cause it is a different animal. We probably will talk Stipe and Daniel Cormier, because that fight's next week. Right. So um, then after that, we got the 21st. We got Josh Whetstone coming on for our next Coach's Spotlight show. So that'll be fun. Josh is, uh, if you didn't listen to the announcements, Josh is one of my best friends um, in high school. He's my left tackle when I was playing running back. Um, so played at West Liberty College. He's the head coach again at West Muskingum. And I think he, I didn't say this in the major announcements, um, but he actually, I think, has a unique kind of job is he's a music teacher and head football coach <laughs> interesting so, yeah yeah so, isn't that cool i um, don't see that uh so that's kind of cool and he i call him the janitor of coaches because let's face it miller sports terrible again after Where? we all graduated he went in and he made him respectable like five and five i believe west muskingum is not good and he's taken over um they were zero and ten i think two years in a row he had his first season he was zero and ten and so he's trying to clean this program up too so that'll be fun and then we got allison hayes coming up um, abc 57 south ben we're still trying to hammer out a date i'm going to try to get reach out to her again and um, if she hasn't put me on like communitywatch.com or something at this point and uh i haven't ever talked to her that much so. that was almost a good single leg <laughs> He's trying. Yeah, that ankle pick. That's what happens when yeah. we watch. Watch. Well, uh, how discreet he's trying to be too. You know? yeah, yeah, right. Like nobody's gonna see this. <laughs> this is what happens when we watch uh, games when we're doing a show. But uh, I'm not stalking Allison Hayes, by the way. Uh, she's busy, and uh, like I said, I have the I have the messages. She wants to come on. We just got to hammer out a date. I, I would imagine we're not her top priority, though. With ABC, what? <laughs> might have a little bit going yeah. on. With ABC and uh, the Notre Dame stuff and being a Big Ten sideline reporter, something tells me the podcast is not of the <laughs> utmost importance. <laughs> so we may not have a date on that for a little bit. And then, of course, September 1, uh, week 1, Notre Dame, Michigan, we're doing the pregame show um, live from Dempsey's. So that'll be a lot of fun. Looking really forward to that. So um, you got anything else for me, Will? Nope. Nope. That, that was that was great. Well, what are we going to do today? You got anything else for me, Aaron? I appreciate you coming hey, on. I appreciate all you guys. Thanks for having me on. Dude, uh, so, yeah, we're pumped. You'll, you guys will be seeing Aaron back on again. I consider him part of the team now, uh, especially a lot through uh, um, college football season, given his perspective and takes. So um, until next time, uh, this episode will be uploaded to SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Facebook Live if you want to see our ugly mugs again. Remember, the show is now brought to you by Dempsey's Food and Spirits, uh, 346 South High Street in Columbus. Head on down for those uh, mimosas and Bloody Marys all weekend, all 4th of July weekend. Um, so that's about it. Official podcast of the Notre Dame Fan Club of Columbus. I don't think I'm missing anything. This is a good argument for no sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But as long as they keep paying, then I guess here we are. So um, until next time, guys, go Irish.